Hi friends, I'm coming at you today from the Smoky Mountains in Eastern Tennessee and I am at Dollywood. Today I'm gonna do a Dollywood deep dive with a full tour and a theme park review. If you're unfamiliar, Dollywood is a well-rounded theme park located in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and it is partially owned and operated by the world-renowned entertainment legend Dolly Parton. If you're planning a summer vacation and you want some entertainment for the entire family, I'm going to show you why Dollywood is a fantastic place for you because there is literally something here for everyone. So let's go get started. First things first, let's get inside the park. So Dollywood has some nice little trams that will come and pick you up and take you to the entrance of the park from the parking lot. How nice is that? And it's shaded, which is great. It's about 88 degrees out here today. So we were just informed by the tram operator that the only two things that are free at Dollywood are tram rides and ice water, which is nice. They want you to stay hydrated on these hot summer days. Also, it's not entirely true that those are the only two things that are free at Dollywood. Dollywood offers a free app to download and use on your phone while you're in the park. It's an easy to use tool that can help you navigate through the park with their handy dandy park map feature. The park map feature shows points of interest including rides, restrooms, restaurants, and concession stands, shops, and other guest services. Speaking of guest services, Dollywood offers a lot of guest services including the Doggywood Pet Kennel. You can also rent strollers, wheelchairs, and electronic convenience vehicles. There's also a centralized measuring booth where they'll measure your child's height, give them specific colored bracelets, which will help the ride operators know if your child meets the specific height requirements of the ride. The app also goes into detail with the rides and you can get specific ride overviews and any specific ride information including the height requirements and loose item policy. Dollywood also is known for its myriad of events and shows, which feature a lot of local artists and musicians. You can create a list of shows you'd like to catch and keep track of when and where you'll need to be to catch a specific show. You can also access your annual pass perks all from the app. Speaking of annual passes, you can purchase tickets and annual passes at the ticket counters, or if you downloaded the app, you can purchase them there or from dollywood.com where you can either print the tickets out or have them emailed to you. If you do opt for the email approach, the ticket barcode can be scanned right from your phone. We opted for the gold annual passes, which at the time of purchase included up to four free guest tickets and free general parking. Dollywood is growing into a full-blown resort, including the Dollywood Splash Country Water Park and Dollywood Dream War Resort and Spa. They're also in the process of building the Dollywood Heart Song Lodge and Resort, which is scheduled to open in the fall of 2023. If you plan on staying in the resort, there are also added perks, which can also be found at dollywood.com. I could go on and on forever in regards to the Dollywood Empire, but today, however, we're just going to focus on just the theme park. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's get started with the tour. Once you're inside the main entrance, you're greeted by the beautifully constructed Show Street Palace Theater, along with the Dollywood sign. You'll notice a common theme throughout the park, consisting of rainbows and butterflies, both of which fascinated Dolly Parton in her childhood, and she's since adopted these as an inspiring symbol. Dollywood is shaped kind of like an oddly shaped triangle, consisting of smaller themed sections of the park. The section we're in now is called Show Street, and this is aptly named as there are many theaters in the area. We'll be back to this section later in the video. For now, we can either go right to continue down Show Street area, or we can go left toward Timber Canyon. Pro theme parker tip number one, we're going to go to the left as most people tend to go right and we like to skip the crowd. 
Usually we go straight to the back of the park and walk right onto the rides as most people are still in the front of the park. But for the sake of this video today, however, we won't be starting in the back of the park, but we're still going to go left. Also of note, Dollywood has seasonal festivals and events. Currently, they're having their Smoky Mountain Summer Celebration presented by Bush's Beans from now until August the 7th. So you'll see road sign theming and summer theming throughout the park. It's all about a summer vacation. There's bubble shows, there's drone shows at night, along with fireworks at night too. Here in the Timber Canyon area, the first thing you'll see Actually, you'll probably hear it first. It's Dollywood's wooden roller coaster, the Thunderhead. Built by GCI in 2004, the ride features a 100 foot drop and has a track length of 3,200 feet. It reaches speeds of up to 54 miles per hour. Riders are treated to intense airtime hills and twisting turns as well as a station flyby. I will warn you, you might want to wait until later in the day to ride this roller coaster if you're sensitive to intensity or just not a fan of the roughness of a wooden roller coaster like me. It has been known to produce a few headaches, worse than the one that Dolly gave Jolene. But it's still a great ride. Next to the Thunderhead and built in the shadow of the wooden roller coaster stands Whistle Punk Chaser, which is a still junior coaster. Children under 42 inches tall must be accompanied by someone 16 years or older with a 36 inch minimum height requirement. Next up we have the Drop Line, which is Dollywood's Drop Tower. It features a 20 story free fall and a stunning view at the top over a nice little pond area. If that's a little too intense, the Lumberjack Lifts is just right across the way. It's a kid-friendly area where you aren't at the mercy of gravity as much. Instead of a 20-story fall, you can manually power lift your way up to 25 feet high. And then if you're up to it, you can release the cable and have a kid-friendly free fall. If you're hungry, also be sure to check out Lumberjack's Pizza and Dippin' Dots. While you're here, if you want to cool off and browse some shops, you can. There's some nice souvenir shops in this area, as well as some comedic performances. Oh, For your edification and amusement, old Buzz is gonna do some character impressions. Fanfare, please. Dum 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 dum. -dum. Here's my impression of a hibernating bear. Watch closely now. Good job. And there's also lockers up near the Mystery Mine entrance. Which this brings me to pro theme parker tip number two. While there are large all day use lockers at the park entrance, I recommend purchasing the multi use lockers which can be moved around the park. Nearly all of the rides have lockers at or near the entrances to the ride. Which really makes for moving around the park really easy. Heading up the hill, we come to the Mystery Mine roller coaster. Mystery Mine was built in 2007 and was the first Gerstlauer Eurofighter in the United States. This style of roller coaster is known for its 90 degree vertical lifts and drops. along with short, wide trains capable of quick whipping sharp turns. At the time of its opening, Mystery Mine had the steepest drop in North America at 95 degrees. Mystery Mine is known for being part dark ride and part roller coaster, with much of the ride taking place inside with the last half of the ride being very intense and providing riders with a significant amount of upside down hang time. If you choose to ride it, you might want to chill out and take it easy for a bit and head up the hill and take the switch back to the left. We're heading to a magical place called Wildwood Grove. 
Built in 2019, this is the newest section of the park. This is a fairy tale woodland themed fantasy area for families and children. Here you'll find smaller rides for smaller children, including the treetop tower, the great tree swing, black bear trail, frogs and fireflies. There's also the Wildwood Creek area where kids can play in the water and splash around. There's also the Mad Mockingbird. A wonderful kid-friendly indoor activity area called the Hidden Hollow. It's a great place to rest and it's air conditioned. You'll also find the beautiful centerpiece butterfly tree here. It's absolutely beautiful at night when it's all lit up. There's also a special roller coaster here named the Dragon Flyer. The Dragon Flyer is the newest roller coaster in the park and it's Dollywood's only suspended roller coaster. It's a unique family oriented roller coaster as it keeps a low profile hugging the ground as it twists and turns to mimic the flight of a dragonfly. This is perfect for smaller children or those who may have a fear of heights. Somehow, the Dragonfly is the most non intimidating yet thrilling roller coaster. It's especially quiet by using a drive tire lift hill versus a louder chain lift hill. Somehow, this roller coaster is the perfect blend. It's something appropriate for smaller children and also something that the adrenaline junkies can get a thrill out of. Be sure to click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen and you can watch a video of a full front row point of view ride on the Dragon Flyer. This area is also beautifully landscaped with a lot of local native plants. Dollywood won the Golden Ticket Award for the most beautiful park last year in 2021 and you can definitely see why. A lot of the plants that they planted attract butterflies and hummingbirds, keeping up with the butterfly theme that Dolly Parton loves so much. They actually call Dolly the Dreamer in Chief because they use a lot of her creativity and the ideas to build the park. Dolly actually said that this was the most personal area of the park to her, as it reminds her a lot of her childhood growing up in the Great Smoky Mountains of Eastern Tennessee. If you get hungry while you're in Wildwood Grove, be sure to stop by the Till and Harvest. It's a quick grab and go style restaurant with food items such as burrito bowls, nachos, burgers. And there's a nice little sit down area outside where you can enjoy your food in the shade. And if you've got a sweet tooth, be sure to stop by Sweets and Treats for some soft serve ice cream and sundaes. When the Wildwood Grove was opened in 2019, it was widely publicized that this section of the park would be built in phases. This is phase one. We're still waiting on phase two, but with visible construction in the area and a recent leak, while the ride hasn't been publicly announced and there are still very few details, it looks as though Dollywood is planning on a big major roller coaster for 2023. I'm really excited to see what Dollywood has up its sleeve for the future. I plan on keeping you posted as more details emerge. To leave the Wildwood Grove area, you'll need to leave the way that you came and head back toward Mystery Mine. We're going to head up the hill to the left toward Wilderness Pass. Crossing under Mystery Mine in the process. While some of the rides can make some people sick, it's surprising how much dehydration plays into it, making people feel sick as well. Dehydration can become very serious and just make you feel absolutely awful. Pro theme parker tip number three, try to stay hydrated, try to stay cool, and keep up with your electrolytes. And take advantage of that free ice water that Dollywood offers. After the trek up the hill, you're going to be really grateful for the covered arbor and the Mr. Fans. This is a great place to cool off. 
This nice rest area actually used to be an interactive water ride, but it's now a gathering area with a fountain and a covered arbor. Throughout the year, there are various shows and entertainment events here. During Christmas, there's typically a large lighted Christmas tree show with snow. Currently, since it's a summer celebration, this is a foam zone, which looks super fun. You can also grab a hot dog from the doghouse or grab a funnel cake from Splinter's Funnel Cakes. There's also plenty of souvenir shops here to browse around. While you're here, be sure to check out the Hansville Wax Company. It's a cool interactive experience. It gives you the opportunity to dip your hands into some wax and create a mold, which is then turned into a really cool fun keepsake. You can't come to the Wilderness Pass without noticing the Fire Chaser Express roller coaster looming above the sidewalk. The Fire Chaser Express is a popular still family launch roller coaster with firefighter theming. It's a hit with the little ones due to its theming story double launches and it's 39 inch minimum height requirement. The ride turns you into a volunteer firefighter responding to a call at Charlie's gas station and fireworks emporium. Now if there's two things that I know should not go together it's fireworks and flammables but this coaster gives you the opportunity to become a hero. For the roller coaster enthusiasts, this coaster was built in 2014 by the manufacturing company Gerslauer, which is the same company that built Mystery Mine. At the time of its opening, the Fire Chaser Express was the nation's first dual launch family coaster. It features a launch forward and backward and utilizes switch tracks to allow multiple trains on the tracks at once. Dollywood really went above and beyond making the theming for this ride meaningful as it pays homage to those working in the line of service as firefighters. You'll notice the 1941 Ford fire truck welcoming you into the ride entrance. While in the queue, you'll also notice fire hoses hanging down from the ceiling, which have been signed by the firefighters who donated them to Dollywood. Many memorabilia items were also found by working with the folks involved in the History Channel shows, American Pickers. There are many patches on display inside the station which were also donated from the brave men and women in the line of service. For those too small to be able to ride the Fire Chaser Express, you can find the Firehouse Fun Yard Playground just below the ride. It's a great way to keep the little ones occupied while they wait for their older siblings to get off the rides. As you make your way down the hill from the Fire Chaser Express, you can't help but notice the massive steel eagle statue welcoming riders to the entrance of the Wild Eagle roller coaster. The Wild Eagle is a steel B&M looping winged roller coaster. Phew, that's a mouthful. The coaster is perched above the mountaintop that the park encircles. It's unmistakable and can be seen from many places in the park. It's actually probably the first thing most people notice from the parking lot. When it opened in 2012, it was the first winged roller coaster in the United States. The wing trains offer a unique experience as the seats are hung over each side of the track so that there's nothing above you or below you, mimicking the sensation of a soaring experience of riding on a winged creature. The ride features a 135 foot drop and four inversions, including a large vertical loop following the first drop, an Immelman, a corkscrew, and a zero G roll. For a back row point of view experience of the Wild Eagle, be sure to click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen. After you grab your belongings out of the lockers, be sure to stop by the Eagles Fly Outfitters to pick up some souvenirs to commemorate your bravery of hitching a ride on the Wild Eagle. Also, if you want a snack to replenish your energy or grab a drink, stop by the Skyview Snack Bar before heading down the hill toward the Craftsman's Valley section of the park, where you'll be greeted by the Tennessee Tornado Roller Coaster. 
The Tennessee Tornado is a sit-down steel aero looping roller coaster built in 1999. Aerodynamics has gone out of business since the coaster was built, making this coaster a last of its kind. It's a tornado themed terrain coaster which utilizes the mountainside to propel riders down the mountain, through a tunnel, and into a 110 foot vertical loop as it speeds up to 70 miles per hour. Legend has it that a tornado swept through the area where a mine was located and pulled the mine train out of the mine and now you're riding it while you swirl through the air like tornado debris. The theming is discreet but still very well thought out. The trains use over the shoulder restraints which can sometimes cause side to side head banging but here's pro theme parker tip number four. If you push your head against the back of the seat, it helps to mitigate the amount of head banging that occurs with these types of restraints. While it doesn't eliminate it completely, it really does help. Take it from somebody who thought it was a good idea to hit up all of the major theme parks in Florida on the same week that they had a raging ear infection. Pro theme parker tip number five, keep your mouth shut on a roller coaster, even if you want to scream, to avoid getting bugs in your mouth. This happened to me. <laughs> Once you're done getting whipped around by the Tennessee tornado and you get the bugs out of your teeth, we're gonna head down the path through Craftsman's Valley. Craftsman's Valley area of the park is an ode to the old ways of Appalachia. The idea of the theming was to take guests back in time to the 1800s to see what life was like over a century ago. This is an older area of the park and harkens back to a time when Dollywood was named Silver Dollar City. Some of you may recognize the name because there is a park of the same name in Branson, Missouri, which is also owned by the Hershen Entertainment family, who, along with Dolly Park, Martin Co. on Dollywood. As you make your way down the valley, you'll come to the Blazing Fury, which also dates back to Dollywood's Silver Dollar City days as it opened in 1978. It's a tame, family friendly part dark ride, part roller coaster, with a cute story of how you rescued an old town from a raging, blazing fury of a fire with some unexpected and suspenseful mishaps along the way. On your way out of the Blazing Fury, stop by the Calico Falls Schoolhouse, which is a replica of an 1800 schoolhouse. It offers a view into history, and it's interesting to see how things have changed in a century. Moving down the valley, you'll come to the Wings of America Theater, an Eagle Mountain Sanctuary, where you can catch an educational show put on by the American Eagle Foundation, which is authorized to possess birds of prey for education, rehabilitation, and breeding. Be sure to catch a show if you can because you'll learn a lot and get to see some of the birds of prey up close and personal. You can also view rescued bald eagles at the Eagle Mountain Sanctuary. All of the eagles at Dollywood are debilitated or injured and cannot be released into the wild due to their injuries. You can help fund their care through donations and education. 100% of the proceeds go toward caring for the birds. You'll also notice a waterfall and the start of a water flume which runs the length of the valley. Can you guess what's at the end? We'll get to the answer in just a few minutes. Here in the valley, you can pan for fool's gold or semi-precious stones here at the Lucky 7 Gem Mine. If your stomach is growling, stop by the Hickory House Barbecue Shack and grab yourself a giant turkey leg or a barbecue sandwich. Just behind the smokehouse, you'll hear thrilling screams and splashes from Dollywood's Daredevil Falls Log. Catch a ride on a failed log as it meanders down a cool mountain river before reaching the sawmill, where you'll plunge down a 60-foot waterfall before splashing down and splashing everyone else around. As you continue down the valley, you'll start to see various craftsman shops for which this section of the park gets its name. You can stop by the Old Flames Candles and watch candle makers at their craft and purchase some of their work. Across the creek, you'll find Valley Forge Blacksmith, where you can observe smithers at their craft and also make a purchase of a handcrafted sculpture 
or even a railroad spike knife. While you're here, take it easy and check out the Robert F. Thomas Chapel, which is a working chapel with Sunday service at 11.30 a.m. during regular season hours and at 4 p.m. in the winter during the Smoky Mountain Christmas Festival. The chapel was built in 1973, back before the park's Dollywood days, and even before the park was Silver Dollar City. Back then, the park was named Gold Rush Junction. The chapel was named in 1973 after Robert F. Thomas, a local physician who coincidentally delivered little baby Dolly Rebecca Parton. Unbeknownst to those who constructed and named the chapel in 1973, that years later, Miss Dolly Rebecca Parton would tie her name to the park in which the chapel was located. There's also an old general store here where you can pick up some nice souvenirs. Moving on down the valley, you'll find Valley Woodcarver's Woodworking Shop where you can find unique handcrafted pieces. I was informed that these sculptures were carved out of 100-year-old fence posts. You can even get a personalized baseball bat or a sign. You can also stop by Smoky Creek Leathers and see one-of-a-kind leather apparel being crafted and make a purchase of a unique gift item. If you didn't grab some food at the Hickory House Barbecue Shack and you prefer more of a restaurant environment, stop by Granny Ogle's Ham and Beans for a plate of good southern cooking. If you prefer something quick, stop by Mr. Jerry's Sit and Sit for a quick drink or snack, but you might want to wait to eat if you're going to ride the Barnstormer, which can be found in a small section of the park behind Mr. Jerry's named Owens Farm. You can swing high above the ground with the same breathtaking moments experienced by the old barnstorming stump pilots on this 1920s airplane stunt pilot themed swinging thrill ride. If the barnstormer is too intense for you, perhaps the little pilot's playground is more appropriate for you. <coughs> Just kidding! The playground is recommended for guests less than 48 inches tall. As you head back down into the Craftsman Valley, you can also find the Valley Theater, and if you still haven't gotten something to eat, stop by Miss Lillian's Smokehouse for some good southern cooking in a sit-down restaurant style experience. If you'd rather have something to go, stop by Miss Lillian's Barbecue Corner instead. Here you can grab a southern fried corn cob on a stick or a three little pig sandwich. Save room for dessert though because just right across the way is the famous grist mill. Which, by the way, is where our water flume from earlier in the video has ended its journey. This is also the home of Dollywood's world famous cinnamon bread. You can grab a loaf of bread here and dig into the warm, gooey deliciousness of fresh made cinnamon bread. Be sure to grab some apple butter or icing to make it even more special. Well, now I'm hungry. From here you can either cross under or over the train tracks and into the Rivertown Junction section of the park or you can follow the tracks along the new path that used to be a tunnel and end up in the village section of the park. Here in the village, you can't help but notice the loud, large, steaming iron elephant in the room, the Dollywood Express. The village section of the park acts as a train depot for riders waiting to hitch a 20 minute 5 mile excursion out and back through the woods on the Dollywood Express. Dollywood has a few steam engines on reserve and services the engines every year in house. Lovingly named Cinderella and Kondike Katie, the locomotives are authentic 110 ton coal fired steam engines whom, as you'll learn, are veterans. The engines were used during World War II on the Alaskan White Pass and Yukon Route. The ride takes you through beautiful scenery and even gives you a not so secret view of the construction going on for the Wildwood Grove Phase 2 project. 
While on your excursion, you may even catch a glimpse of some local wildlife if the train whistle doesn't scare them away. Be aware that this is an authentic coal-fired steam engine and you may get some soot on you. It happens. The train departs the depot once every hour and seating is available first come first served. You don't have to be bored while you're waiting to catch the train while you're in the village though. There's plenty to do here. If you're smunchable, stop by the newly refurbished Iron Horse Pizza and cool off in the outdoor seating area while you eat. The village is also where you'll find the nostalgic village carousel. Now this thing is big too. If you haven't figured it out yet, Dolly doesn't do anything on a small scale. Check out the detail on some of these horses. There isn't one here that's the same. You can catch a quick show at the Heart Song Theater or shop for some candy, clothes, toys, or heck, even build your own toy at Temple's Merchandise. A little birdie told me that you can sometimes visit with Thomas the train here. Tucked behind Temple's Merchantile, you can find the country fair section of the park. This county fair themed area of the park, like Wildwood Grove, is a little kid heaven, as most of the flat rides found here have minimal height requirement. The area is dominated by the Sky Rider, which looks really fun. The Shooting Star, which is kind of like a miniature drop tower. You'll also find the Scrambler and the Waltzing Swings here. You can have some fun on the bumper cars at the Demolition Derby. And there's a cluster of farm animal themed rides for the teeny tiny kiddos to have a blast on. You can get dizzy on the Dizzy Disc, or if the Dizzy Disc didn't get you dizzy enough, you can spin around on the Lemon Twist. There's a bunch of snack shops in this area too, which seem to cater to the younger cuisine with food items such as chicken tenders, fries, hot dogs, and ice cream. Leaving the village by crossing the train tracks, we're going to head into the Rivertown Junction area of the park. Grab one of Dollywood's famous footlong corn dog or hot dogs at the Dogs and Taters and settle in. You might just catch an entertaining show by some amazing local talent at the Back Porch Theater. What's this theater the back porch of, you might ask? Well, Dolly's Tennessee Mountain Home, of course. Step up onto the porch and take a tour of this replica of Dolly Parton's humble childhood home. Built with the help of Dolly's parents, you can get a true sense of Dolly's humble upbringing, which was common in rural Appalachia during those times. Speaking of home, just right across the way you can find Mountain Laurel Home Decor Shop. You can find unique home furnishings and accessories in here such as candles, linens, and soaps. Not only is the merchandise gorgeous in here, but the building itself is as well. There's a working water wheel in here. A water wheel! What? I could stay all day in here, but... I just received a text message that my table at Aunt Granny's is available. That's right, we're going to Aunt Granny's. What's an Aunt Granny's, you say? Well, it's a popular sit-down, all-you-can-eat family dinner style restaurant here in Rivertown Junction where you can get delicious southern style cooking and rumor has it, some of the food items are Dolly's personal recipes. I know for a fact that the fried chicken is Dolly's recipe, and if I recall correctly, the green beans, corn pudding, and roasted red potatoes, and the pot roast are all Dolly's recipes. But don't hold me to it. The restaurant is super popular, and there's usually a very long wait time, so go ahead and place your reservation early. Since we're stuffed from Aunt Granny's and would most likely explode into a cloud of fried chicken and pot roast if shaken up by some rides, we're going to browse around in the Christmas cottage where we found the cutest coat of many colors Christmas ornaments 
along with some beautiful snow globes among many of the other gorgeous Christmas decorations. We also headed up the hill and browsed some incredible creations by the glass blowers at the Mountain Blown Glass Shop. What talent and creativity it took to make some of these gorgeous creations. Absolutely beautiful. You can even watch as the glass blowers create a personalized keepsake especially for you. Since our poor stomachs have a lot of food to digest, we're going to cool off by catching the amazing Gazillion Bubble Show at Dolly Parton's Celebrity Theater. The Gazillion Bubble Show Aurora is part of Dollywood's summer celebration and you absolutely have to catch a show while you can. Watch the 16-time Guinness Book of World Record holder Fan Yang perform this wonderful and interactive bubble art show. I was absolutely blown away, pun intended, by this magical display of both science and art. If you don't come to Dollywood for any other reason, come for this show. You will not be disappointed. I highly recommend. 15 out of 10 stars. Now that our food has settled and because it's hot outside, because we got spoiled after being inside the theater with air conditioning, we're going to go cool off and get a little wet <laughs> on the Smoky Mountain River Rampage, which is Dollywood's classic whitewater river rapids. Now that we're thoroughly soaked, we're going to head across the creek and into Jukebox Junction area. The Jukebox Junction area of the park is a 1950s style themed area of the park where you'll find Rockin' Roadway where you can learn how to drive if you're a left lane hogger. Or if you already know how to drive, then you can focus on the pleasure of soaking up the sun on a scenic drive in a classic Corvette, Cadillac, or Thunderbird convertible. While you gather up some gumption and pour yourself a cup of ambition. <clears throat> I'll just leave the singing to Dolly. To hitch a ride, on the lightning rod. We saved the best for last. If this thing isn't intimidating enough, this is what the thrill seekers and coaster enthusiasts come to Dollywood for. This thing is intense and not for the faint of heart. Lightning Rod is a world renowned hot rod themed RMC hybrid launch roller coaster and it's consistently named one of the top 10 best coasters in the nation, if not the world. And it lives up to its hype. Built by Rocky Mountain Construction, aka RMC, in 2016, it was a launched wooden roller coaster, a first of its kind, and was also the fastest wooden roller coaster reaching up to 73 miles per hour. But unfortunately, it was plagued by reliability issues. Due to the issues, RMC modified sections of the coaster in 2018 with new steel eye box track, making the coaster a hybrid wood and steel coaster, rather than just a wooden roller coaster. Even though it no longer holds the title due to its new hybrid status, it still reaches up to 73 miles per hour and is known to be relentless and intense with steep banking turns, quickly transitioning from one element to the next. It gives riders a crazy amount of lift your butt out of the seat airtime on the four bunny hills that the coaster enthusiasts call the quad down near the end of the ride. It's light and quick, intense, and I always get off of this ride with my hair messed up and wondering what the heck just happened. If you like excitement, intensity, and adrenaline, this is your coaster. If you lost your Aunt Grannies on the lightning rod and you're hungry again, be sure to stop by Red Diner where you can grab a burger or a shake in this 1950s style diner. There's also a relax and recharge stations outside near the outdoor seating area where you can relax and recharge not only yourself, but also your phone as well. Yes, I'm laying down. Don't judge me. 
Remember those guest services I talked about at the beginning of the video? Well, there are a few relax and recharge phone charging stations scattered discreetly throughout the park. Be sure to keep your eyes peeled or check their locations on the park map. First aid stations throughout the park are also another guest service that Dollywood offers. So if you catch yourself not feeling so hot, or if you caught a headache from the thunderhead or the lightning rod, stop by the first aid station and see if they have any remedies. While you're on this side of the creek, be sure to venture into the adventures and imagination area of the park where you can tour Dolly's home on Wheels tour bus. Unfortunately, it was closed when we were here, but hopefully we'll have another opportunity to catch a tour. The Dream Song Theater is also located here, as well as the Dolly Parton Chasing Rainbows Museum, where you can catch a glimpse of Dolly Parton memorabilia and follow the history of her life and career. Unfortunately, it's closed for the 2022 season as they take time to reimagine the museum, but you can take a virtual tour online on dollywood.com. Outside, you'll find the food truck neighborhood, which is part of the summer celebration, and there are some delicious options here. This area is where you'll also find the famous Dolly's Closet Shop, where you can find tons of apparel options, gifts, and you can even purchase Dolly's fragrance. A scent from above, which we did. We plan on making a full fragrance review video in the future. If we got around to it, be sure to click up in the right hand corner for the card so you can watch the video. If they're sold out of the fragrance here at Dolly's Closet, you may be able to find some in the Emporium on the way out. It sells out really quick though. From here, you'll head back across the creek and into the Show Street area of the park where we began our journey. This is where you're going to find plenty of shopping and food options. If you haven't figured it out yet, food is my love language. So we're going to stop by the Front Porch Cafe and grab a bite to eat. The Front Porch Cafe is a popular sit-down restaurant style lunch and dinner option. We got the fried green tomatoes for the starter and the PBLT, which were absolutely delicious and perfect in every way. These were honestly the best fried green tomatoes I've ever had. I could have licked the basil oil off of the plate, but I used it to dip my pork chops in from my PBLT, which was superb. We didn't order dessert this time around, but we've heard that the dessert options here are amazing. We saved our dessert room for some of the goodies that you can find in the Sweet Shop Candy Kitchen, which is located just a few steps away from the Front Porch Cafe. In the sweet shop, you can find treats such as caramel apples, homemade fudge, and other sweets. Across the pathway, you can find the Spotlight Bakery. If you're regretting not purchasing some cinnamon bread from the grist meal, you're in luck because you don't have to walk all the way back to the meal. You can purchase some here before you exit the park through the Emporium. Bye! Thanks for coming! Y'all come back now! But we are milking this visit. We are not leaving. We have a fireworks and drone show to catch. You can purchase a quick pick-me-up shot of caffeine if you're planning on staying for the fireworks and drone show. It'll help you get back up the hill through Timber Canyon to where you can get to Wildwood Grove, which is where, as I'm told, where you can get the best view of the fireworks and the drone show, as well as dance some of your caffeine off at the Dollywood Sweet Summer Nights dance party while you wait for the sun to go down. If the caffeine didn't hit you like it should have, you can relax and recharge yourself and your phone again. Don't judge me. Props to the energy level of DJ Josh though, this guy has had a busy day. You may recognize your DJ as part of the group who played on the back porch theater from earlier in the day. And he can still muster this level of energy. Mad props, bro. Mad props. I highly recommend staying for the fireworks and drone show if you can. As a drone pilot myself, my mind was absolutely blown away by the precision and synchrony as well as the artistic expression. Fireworks were fantastic, beautiful, and well worth staying late. After you exit the park, you can hitch a ride on a tram. While on the way out, we were informed that Dollywood will assist you with any minor car trouble you may have, such as a dead battery, flat tire, or if you locked your keys out of the car, or if you just can't find your car, all for free of charge. 
How nice is that? We caught a tram ride back to the car with the world's biggest dog, by the way. Now that we've exited the park and the tour is over, thank you for coming. Now for the review. Review time! So what's the verdict on Dollywood? 10 out of 10, of course. What else is there? As a self-proclaimed roller coaster enthusiast, I've been to many parks in the United States, and I can tell you that Dollywood is probably my favorite. There's a reason why Dollywood was voted the number one amusement park in the United States by TripAdvisor for the year 2022. Dollywood caters to the whole family. There's a ride for all age group. And if rides just aren't your thing, then there's food, there's an event, there's a show, there's something here for everyone. And Dollywood goes above and beyond to give a good quality, memorable experience to their guests. Even though Dollywood is a lot smaller than parks like Disney or Universal, it still packs a punch. There's a lot of stuff here and a small footprint. Take it from somebody that tried to do a full tour video. The footage in this video took place over six different visits to Dollywood on several occasions. There's absolutely no way to pack the entire park into just one day. You definitely won't run out of anything to do here. I was really impressed with how much Dollywood cares for its employees and how much its employees care for Dollywood. You can tell that they work 9 to 5 to bring you the best experience possible. So with that being said, this concludes our video. Please like, comment, and subscribe so you can help my channel grow and so you can see more content like this in the future. Thanks so much for sticking with me. Bye.